In this video, we want to replace one more technique from calculus that we've done before in the context of a parametric curve where x is a function of t and y is a function of t. And what we're going to do in this video is going to be arc length. So if I have some curve like this, I want to know, well, if I took that curve and stretched it out like a piece of string, how long would that curve be? Now, the technique we used when we did arc length in the past was to replace this nice smooth curve by a polygonal path. A path that's just made up of a bunch of straight lines. And the basic reason for this is that straight lines are things I know how to compute the length of, and I can sum up all the straight lines and maybe take some sort of limit. So the sort of guiding philosophy for our formula here is that the arc length is going to be the sum of all of these little line segments, and I can figure out the length of any individual line segment. Then I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity, so the number of segments gets very large, but the length of any individual segment gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And then if I do that, I will replace my summation with an integral, and well, that's how we did arc length in the past. So let's do that again here. So first thing I want to do is I want to want to zoom in on one particular region here. So let's just talk about one little region of arc length. I've got a change in x, and I've got a change in y. Now, in the past, when we talked about arc length, what we did was we took the x and we divided that up into n different little regions, the regions that each have a width delta x. And then what we focused on is, well, what is delta y? And it was going to be the derivative of the function times delta x. But in this video, well, both the x and the y depend on t. So the thing we're going to break up into a bunch of little regions is not the x's, it is the t values. That you have some interval of t's, you break that up into n different regions. They each have a width delta t. And then both the x and the y are going to have a change in x and a change in y as you change your t. So the approximations I'm going to make is going to be, first of all, I'm going to take delta x and I'm going to write this as the derivative f prime, remember x is equal to f, times delta t. And then my delta y is going to be g prime times delta t. Now, why do I have a t star and a t double star in there? The reason is the same reason we had a star back when we did arc length the very first time earlier on in the semester. And basically what we're doing is we're doing a mean value theorem here. And, and what we're saying is that in this little region, there is some spot in the middle of that region. I don't know exactly where, so that's why I put the star there. Star says it's somewhere in there, but I don't know where. And then what the mean value theorem said is that at that particular point, the slope of the tangent line was equal to the slope of the secant line. Or in other words, the discrete slopes like delta y over delta t was just equal to the derivative of the actual slope of the tangent line at some point in the middle. Now, none of this is going to matter all that much because we're going to take a limit at the end of the day. And what we're going to have is our delta t is going to go smaller and smaller and smaller in the limits we can infinitesimal. So the fact that we don't know exactly where this equality occurs is not going to be relevant when we take our t and send it down to zero. Now, the thing we actually care about is the red line here. We want to know what this straight line we're trying to approximate that. Well, this is nothing but, by Pythagoras, the square root of delta x squared plus the delta y squared. Okay, so that's what I'm going to put in for the length of my little line segment. So what do I have? This is the summation of the square root of, first of all, the delta x squared, aka the f prime delta t all squared, and then plus the delta y squared, aka the g prime squared times delta t squared. I'm then going to factor out a copy of delta t. And then my final trick is the most important. It's the replacing the summations and the finite deltas with a limit as n goes to infinity, and that gives me an integral sign all the way out the front, an integral from alpha up to beta of the square root of f prime squared plus g prime squared, all of that in integral dt. All right, so now that we've sort of sped through rederiving arc length in this new context, let's actually see an example. So let's go back to the familiar one we've seen a couple times now, this particular curve where what do we have is x is t squared and y is t cubed minus 3t. And I'm in particular going to focus on just the loop. That's what I want to figure out, the arc length of that loop. Now I'm going to need both derivatives, so f prime is 2t, and I'll also compute out that g prime is going to be 3t cubed minus 3. Okay, so there's my functions that I can put into my formula, but what about the endpoints, the alpha and the beta? Well, what I'm going to do here is if x is equal to 3, we've seen in the past that we can solve the equation, that gives you t is plus or minus square root 3. 
So what I'm doing is I'm starting at x equal to 3, I'm going all the way around my loop and getting back to x equal to 3, but it's at two different t values. I could start at, say, minus root 3 and go up to plus root 3. So if I plug all of that into my formula, what do I have? The integral from the minus root 3 up to the plus root 3, the two sort of endpoints of my interval of t. And then I plug in my square root of the f prime squared and the g prime squared. And this is actually a super gnarly integral. I don't really want to do it, but I can do it numerically by going to Wolfram Alpha or whatever you prefer. And you plug that in, and what you get is approximately 8.98 as an answer to this particular curve. So this is pretty empowering. Now we can do tangent lines, we can do areas, and finally with this video, we can do arc lengths if I give you a parametric curve, where previously, before this little series of videos, all we were able to do were those things when you had it of the form y is a function of x, a function that would pass the vertical line test. Now we can do it in the more general parametric case.